Are you tired of using VHS filters that don't look good, but you can't afford the studio version of DaVinci Resolve for the analog damage? Then stay tuned for this exciting new tutorial, where I show you how to give any clip a retro VHS look in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So credit where credit is due, I got this technique from watching this After Effects tutorial from River of the Valley. I just kind of translate it into Fusion. And do let me know if you'd like to see me do stuff like this more often. Send me some After Effects tutorials you'd like to see in Fusion. I'm also going to assume you have some experience in Fusion. If you've never opened Fusion before, then you can check out my beginner tutorials playlist right here. So here in Fusion, I've got my footage right here. This is just some stock footage, but it can be literally anything. So first, in the media pool, I'm gonna bring down this VHS overlay that I downloaded from pexels.com. I will link that in the description. I can merge this over our footage and change the apply mode to screen. Now you might be tempted to stop here, but there are some things we can do to really take this to the next level. So right now, our footage is in 1920 by 1080, which is much higher resolution than VHS was. So to give it the proper VHS resolution, what we can do is bring down a background, then in the image tab, uncheck auto resolution and change it to 640 by 480. Now that has the right VHS resolution. So what we can do is we can bring this down. I can merge our footage over that, but now it's too big. So in the size of the merge, we can change the size to 0.45. That seems to fit the screen pretty well, but you might have to play around with this if you're using 4K footage. So I can disconnect this going into the media out. I don't need that for now. Now here comes the real secret sauce to this effect. We're gonna replicate how VHS actually stores video. Basically what it does is it squeezes the color and the luminance channels and then stretches them back out before putting them together. If you want a more detailed explanation, again, you can watch that video. The luminance channel has about half the original resolution. So we can add a resize node and plug our merge into that. Now by default, it's gonna stretch it to our comp resolution, which is gonna be 1920 by 1080. So we can just change that to 640 by 480 once again. Now what I'm gonna do is with this selected, I'm gonna copy it. Since we're gonna be using this multiple times, it's easier to just copy and paste it. I am going to take our width and divide that by two. So now it's half the original size. Now I can paste our original resize again, bring that to the screen. Now if I zoom in on some of the details, you can see it's kind of stretched it out a little bit. We've lost a bit of detail, which is exactly what we want with this effect. Now for the color, we'll paste our resize again. Make sure nothing's selected when you paste it so it won't be connected to anything. I will plug our merge into that. I can bring that to the screen. And this time, the color channel is about 1 16th of the original image. So I'm gonna divide that by 16 and then I'm going to paste our original resize. Now you can see we've lost a lot of detail on this one. Now we can merge this on top of the other one and change the apply mode to color. Now if we look at this before and after, this is doing a ton to give it that VHS distorted look, but there's still some more things we can do. I'm going to add a blur and I'm going to set the blur size to two. Now, after this, I'm going to add a sharpen. Now this may seem counterintuitive, but it makes for a nicer, more subtle sharpening. Next, we can add some glitchy distortions that we sometimes get with this effect. So I will add a waviness effect, bring that to the screen. Now it's making them all wobbly, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna uncheck animate, so it's not gonna move throughout the clip. I'm going to bring up the scale all the way. And right now, again, it's doing it to the full screen, which we don't want. So I'm going to add a rectangle node to this stretch it out very long, squeeze it down so it's pretty thin, and then I'm going to bring this just down to the bottom of the screen. Now we can see there's a bit of distortion going along the bottom. It's not looking quite strong enough for me, so I think I'm gonna bring up the strength all the way, make it even more distorted. Now VHS footage is always really grainy, so we can add a grain effect, who would have thought? Now with grain, you always have to play around with it to match your footage, so my settings might not work for you, but what I like to do is bring down the power bring up the gain size a bit and the softness. And I like to bring up the red power and the blue difference. Sorry, the red difference and the blue difference. Now this is just a personal thing, but I like to add a color corrector and bring the saturation to about 1.5. I just think it looks nicer for this type of effect. Next, I'm gonna add a color curves effect. So this point at the bottom represents the darkest parts of the image. And this part up here represents the brightest parts. 
Now since VHS didn't have a ton of dynamic range, I want to uncheck alpha, make sure we're not touching that, then I just want to bring up the dark point and bring down the light point a bit, just so our image is a little bit less contrasty. Now, as a finishing touch, I can add a camera shake effect, bring that to the screen. Now by default, it's just going crazy everywhere, which is not what we're looking for. So I'm going to bring the X deviation and the rotation deviation down all the way. I'm also gonna bring the Y deviation down to 0.1. Now it's still too strong, so I'm gonna bring down the overall strength to 0.05 and bring the speed all the way up. This just adds a slight bit of jitter up and down. You can see on some of the details here, if I turn it off, turn it on. It's really subtle, but I think it adds a lot. And just as a refresher, we started with this and got to this. And the nice thing about this effect is that you can replace this media in with any other footage and it still works fine. Now this effect looks really nice with motion graphics if you want to give them an old school look. It also looks really nice on blender renders, and since it's taking away details, you can get away with using an insanely low sample count on the render. And if you're looking for more fun things you can do to your footage, you can check out this video right here, where I show you how to turn any video into an animated painting.